everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to my craftcation. Uh, it's an annual staycation that I have where I'm not supposed to be filming any Chemnitz content, but I often will do some kind of craft. And to this weekend, I had planned to set up my rigid head of loom and finally give this a go. Unfortunately, a little repeated stress injury, I'm not sure what it's called, may set me back a little bit. But I'm hoping to, instead of like exploring weaving, my goal is to actually finish getting this loom set up and potentially get it warped. So this is more of a vlog versus a tutorial of any kind because this is my first, actually no, I probably technically had like a two inch rigid heddle loom back as a kid um, for doing like tiny bookmarks, but I don't remember how I did that or anything about that. So this is really my first rigid heddle loom and I'm very excited to give it a go. In terms of equipment, I've shown off my homemade warping board before, which I'm sure will come in pretty handy. And this is as far as I got to setting up the loom when I first got it. Uh, and so there were, I guess, I have no idea what all these pieces are called that were put in, um, but I think I got to a point on the steps where I had to like tie some ropes on and that made me pretty nervous. Yeah, I think that this is about where I was in the instructions and I was like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. So let's uh, go and find some YouTube videos. <laughs> Silly me, they actually reference a video on their website. I'm gonna go check that out. It's the next morning when I'm finally doing this and oh my gosh, this was easier than I thought and actually finding the video on the website on my phone was a little harder than I thought. So I will make sure that I link that video down below so that way you can find it quickly. But. Uh, these cords with a little like separation and holes in them are really cool. I thought I was going to have to tie knots and well, you don't have to tie anything. So that's great. <laughs> so I have both an eight dent and then I purchased a 12 dent uh, heddle. I think that this, that's what this is called. I purchased this from Paradise Fibers along with some of these uh, shuttles. I clearly still need to learn terminology, but I will also link those down below. My thought is to start with some simple project. I would like to try to do some mug rug uh, type things. I believe that there is probably a tutorial that comes with this loom for that, but I'm just, I think I'm gonna kind of wing it a little bit just to see. But I'm gonna use some leftover yarn that I have. This is some yarn that Lucas dyed that then went into a hat that may or may not be have been shown in a dyeing to knit video yet. I don't know, um, because I dyed some yarn to go along with it. And so I'll use, maybe I'll warp with this one and then weave with the orange. I figure that whatever I make would make really nice uh, stocking stuffers or Hanukkah gifts for grandparents and maybe other family members, especially because Lucas made this himself. Uh, we have a million coasters around my house, so it's not that we need them. But I thought that, I mean, it seems like a great place to start because I think it wouldn't take very long to weave and is a way to get a feel for the tool. For all I have my glorious warping board here, I think I'm going to follow the instructions and try, I think this would be a direct warp. I only have two of these clamps and I guess three places that I'd want to put them, but for all this can move. I think it's fairly sturdy. So we're gonna give this a go. <laughs> I have no idea if I am doing this correctly or not, but we will proceed. This is why I am using remnant yarn for my first try. But the nice thing is that pulling a loop of the yarn through a slot over isn't moving where the loom goes. So it, it, it does feel fairly consistent. Another thing I have learned is that you probably want this apron rod to be a little closer back to this, I don't know, this thing that you twist and you'll wrap the extra warp around. 
uh, because I, uh oh, that's twisted. I think I can get that fixed. Oh dear. Hopefully that's not a big deal. But anyway, there right now that I'm going to be going over the apron to go through this slot, it's not a big deal, but whenever I need to go underneath it, there's just not a lot of space to pull it through. I'm using this tiny crochet hook to pull the warp through the slots. I guess there's supposed to be a hook that came with it, but I don't have it. So uh, that might be something else I need, but also I'm getting by with just this tiny hook. Yeah, because now to come through this loop right here, I need to bring this yarn underneath. That's not, not so bad. I am, thankfully this is not hurting my wrist to do, so that is something that is good. Uh, I do, I put a lighter wrap on. The wrist is doing pretty well. Okay, so now I need to come up and under. Um, oh dear. <laughs> Give me a little more slack. See, it's getting like closer and closer as things go on. My wrist is doing pretty well. Uh, I am not in that much pain. It's still, unless I try to like really use it, which is unfortunate, but manageable. And so I would say that this, <laughs> it's funny, putting the crochet hook through this little spot is, feels very similar to how like I can't, so you can't really twist or maneuver the hook, but similarly, that's like what I can't do with my wrist right now. So anyway, this is going much faster than I expected. And I have to think about how wide I want it. I'm kind of making it up, <laughs> making it up as I go along. So I should look into how much things shrink both in terms of like from being pulled in from the actual weaving but then I know that like wet finishing is a thing and so that may cause some shrinkage. I believe that this yarn I'm, I'm warping with right now is superwash and the yarn that I will be weaving with with the weft I think that's the right term. That is not superwash. So that is something else to keep in mind. But this actually may be pretty good. It's about five inches across and one of my coasters does fit across it. So maybe I'll do one more slot and then I am going to attempt to finish this off. So let's see. One last one. Not bad, not bad. The wonderful person who gave me the heddle also gave some heavy paper, which wasn't quite long enough for what I was doing here, but hopefully that won't be a big problem. <laughs> But it looks so pretty. And now I think I've got to transfer some of the yarn into from the uh, slots into the holes. Okay, so far so good. So I've discovered I don't need to remove the warp all the way. I can just sort of pull it through like so, and I'm removing each one, each warp, oops, from the slot to the hole that's on the left. Uh, I figured that that made some sense, and I hope that this continues to go smoothly. And I think after I do this, I will take a break to rest my wrist.
for a bit, but we're almost done warping, which was my goal for the weekend. I think I might actually be able to do some weaving later tonight. I think that this part is pretty fun. I have no idea if I am dividing things. Ooh, I might not be dividing things straight. I haven't really been focusing on that very well. Uh, certainly, I think I have a lot of excess of my warp. I don't even know if I'm in focus for this. But hey, I figure too much excess is better than not enough and things seem like it's going pretty well. I mean, I think this is just about all warped. Uh, I don't know what, I have to tie them into bows? Yep, make a little bow tie. And then, wow, I guess it's gonna be pretty good. So then I guess, oh cool, cool, okay. <laughs> Hopefully I have this set up okay. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tie them in bows and then take a break. I made a big boo-boo. Crap. This is all supposed to go up and over this beam. I don't know if there's a way to fix that. Uh, because, yeah. I was like, something, something's not quite right. And, yeah. Okay. I undid this. And now I am going to gently remove. Uh, I have to untie this monstrosity. That's okay. I can loop that off. All right. I'm going to remove the apron strings. Bring that back under. And then put it on somewhere into the middle. Oh man, I think this may have worked. And I don't have to rewarp everything. Okay. Oh my gosh. I think that this may work. Oh my gosh. Okay. To figure out how to feed the paper. <laughs> okay, but I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> so the back is fixed. I'm gonna have to do the same thing with the front, which is gonna mean retying these. But since I redid things and they're slack, I need to retie them anyway. So, well, you know, you learn the first time. <laughs> okay, I think this looks better. <laughs> so now, oh, I can go into the up position and there's space. And we can go into the down position and there is less space but i have a feeling that once we get started that'll be better so we have successfully warped the loom this is the problem i have sometimes with written instructions and written tutorials is that because they both wanted to show a close-up of the area that you were working on there wasn't a also a pullback and it was hard to see where sh things should be in respect to all of the bars. So this is a learning experience. I'm glad that I figured out a way to fix it uh, without completely redoing everything in the slots and holes. I think that that would be really, really hard. Um, but I think that overall this didn't take as long as I thought it might. And given that I am a complete beginner, uh, this means that this is something that I think would be faster uh, the more you get going. And so I think that that is really good. I'm relieved. Uh, the peg thing worked really, really well, except I think that if you wanted to make something a lot longer, then you probably want to deal with a warping board. Uh, so I am, again, very, very excited and I'm gonna go rest uh, for a couple of hours to uh, try to give it a break. I am, uh, I think I'm 
I think it's doing fine, but I am trying to be really careful and listen when things ache. And so that's my sign to take a nice break. <laughs> but given that I amended my goal from doing my first ever weaving project to warping the loom for the first time, it is warped. I have done it. And uh, next, I guess I'll have to wind yarn onto the shuttle and then we can try to start weaving. Okay, I'm winding onto the shuttle. I hope that I'm doing the figure eight correctly. <laughs> and I also hope that like the reason for the figure eight becomes like apparent at some point. Um, I guess it's a little easier to do than to wind around and around maybe. I don't know. I'm assuming that it would be easier for getting the yarn off. But again, I don't know yet. So we'll have to uh, wait and see. All right, we are ready to give this a shot. I use some of these big craft like tongue depressors to, you can see like how the warp is like spread out where we tied it and then it makes it a little bit more even. So this is a thing that sometimes people use like pieces of paper and stuff. So we'll see. Um, these might be a tiny bit narrow, but I'm going to give it a shot and I'm going to, well, maybe try to move this somewhere so it's at a less awkward height, but try to start weaving. Look at that. I'm weaving. This is like just a couple minutes. I have no idea. Like I'm in a rigid huddle like, group, Facebook group. And so people always talk about like not having it be too tight. And so I feel like this feels very balanced with the warp and the weft. But I have no idea if, like, things will, I mean, because it's two different fiber types. So I have no idea what will happen when I wet it, if things will sort of fluff up or what. But this is a learning experience. In worst case scenario, these can, I can turn these into, like, little itty bitty bags or something for the kids to play with. So I'm just very excited. It's not perfect, but this is the first thing I've woven and we're about five inches across and about five inches in length. So I think it's time to advance and move on to another one. And I could cut the yarn now, but I am not going to. I'm gonna come in, I think, with some of these popsicle sticks. I don't know how big I want the fringe to be. Certainly not that big, but figure it's better to have more space reserved than I think that I will need. So now, well, I'm gonna have to advance it because I'm not gonna be able to get through up there, but that is my uh, technique for spacing things out because I think that that should be plenty of space for whatever knots or something I tie over there. Uh -huh. So this first one is going to be a little tricky. So the thing that has been tricky for me is to not beat too hard. So try to keep loose and I'm definitely not pulling too tight, but I am pro Ow. <laughs> but I am probably going a tad bit too loose um, for the sludge. Oh, I think some people say sometimes they like double up the strands on the edges or something. I'm not really sure. But as for the figure eight, I think I need to get used to which side of the shuttle to put through first because it kind of unravels itself, which is super handy. But given that uh, my project is so small, means that I don't need that much yarn. So I have a feeling I enjoy keeping this up I may be asking oops for a stand 
of some kind for my birthday. But the nice thing is that I'm doing this narrow project right here, these little mug rugs, but I don't think doing something wider would take that much more time. It certainly would take more time for the warp, but it wouldn't take more time to like put the shuttle through something that was the entire, I forget how big, if this is 15 or 16 inches. So that I think is pretty cool that we, yeah, it means that things can go pretty quickly. And obviously if you have like a, a dent that has more strands per inch, it would take longer as well. But for a worsted weight project, uh, this is going, oh no, <laughs> rather nicely. And of course it's a little awkward because I've put the camera in there and I have no idea if it is focused or not, but so far, so far so good and I'm pretty happy with it. And so in just what, those couple of minutes I have woven one and a half inches. So this could go pretty quickly. Quick question. Am I supposed to be inserting paper when I'm like wrapping up my finished weaving? I don't understand the purpose of the paper on the warp side that you wrap up unless that's so that way maybe you don't pull things too, too tightly and stretch the yarn. I don't know. So it's also possible because of stretching it that things will be not as square as they are on the loom. There may be some like shrink back, but you know, it is what it is, and we will see how things turn out. <laughs> I've lost track of how many of these I've done so far. I guess I could probably count the popsicle sticks, but we've done a lot. I'm trying to sneak, see if I can sneak one more out. It's a little harder. There's like a little less space in here, but uh, I figured maybe we can fit one more, and then we'll go and cut our cloth. The setup of the whole thing was a little bit intimidating, but otherwise, I think that the whole process overall has been fairly intuitive and easy to manage. Maybe though it does help that I have been lurking and seeing posts come across my feed. So there were some tips that I had known because I'd been following all that, even though I didn't know really how to warp or anything like that. So. I am very, very happy with how things have gone. All right, I now need to cut all of the yarn and I want to be careful and not cut the apron strings. I did already reduce the tension um, so that way things would not like snap forward or anything, but and, oh no, <laughs> do this, I'm just gonna snip there. But now I think I can pull this out. Oh, we have one more string to snip. Now let's just unroll this. Uh-oh, why is it stuck? Because that that's in the way? <laughs> Whoa, this is bigger than I thought. So we have, how many did I do? Six? Wow. All in an afternoon. I don't think I could have crocheted things this size this quickly. Um, so let's see. I would say if we start at the beginning and the light isn't so great in here right now. I think I was fairly consistent through. I think I started pulling a little bit tighter. So these at the end, maybe, yes, they are definitely a bit more narrow than the ones at the beginning. But this is so cool. I do need to be careful because I haven't done any finishing details yet. And this is already becoming a tiny bit loose. So, I don't know 
how I'm going to finish these off. I don't know if I left enough space in here um, for a tiny little mug rug fringe. We will figure that out. But for my first attempt, I think these are great. I am going to wait until tomorrow before I try to knot off any of the fringe. I plan to do something simple, short, knotted. Uh, hopefully there is enough space to do that. If not, then we'll try to figure something else out. But I would say for a practiced run, this is pretty, pretty wonderful. And I'm very, very excited. I, in the morning, I will look and see about how to knot. I think that I don't want I, I, yeah, I, I don't know how I'm going to not and get that close to, but we will find out. <laughs> Never mind. I watched a little video and so then I started just coming and nodding and I'm a little bit nervous because right here I have plenty of like fringe Base. I'm not making them that tight yet because I figure I can always tighten them at the end. But I have so much fringe space here that I'm afraid that when I get over here and don't have nearly as much space, it might be harder. But I'm doing three strands at a time because I counted and that would be even. Yeah, I didn't do myself any favors. It seemed like this was plenty of distance for like a short little fringe. I didn't think about having to tie knots. I think if I had done six of these popsicle sticks in between each one, or maybe, yeah, six would have been like a minimum for easy tying. I was able to do it, and I will be able to tighten and neaten these up. And I feel like the two sides will be fairly consistent, which is good. Uh, I'm definitely not going to trim anything until I have wet finished the fabric. And now for real, I am going to put my, my overnight splint back on and stop for the night. <laughs> I am going to stop. I promise. Okay, taking lots of breaks. I think I have settled into a rhythm where I will twist the three strands I want to knot and then pull it through with a crochet hook, which sometimes takes a couple of tries because sometimes, oh, that one did fine. Because sometimes I won't get the knot, like everything in all the way and then have to like adjust and move it down towards the edge. And so it's not perfect, but it's working. And I did start like on mostly one side, but since I know that it goes all the way even, I did go ahead and do one on the other side. So that way we don't unravel the weave at all. And yeah, my hand is doing okay. I am again trying to take lots of breaks uh and you know splint it and rest periodically but i do have two done so that's really good well they still need to be wet finished um but yeah i'm happy with like the drape and stuff and so it's not as soft as like i usually find this yarn not that wool of the andes is the softest but something about it feels a little rougher currently woven but uh, I'm excited to, I guess, see the difference between wet finishing and maybe I'll have one that I don't wet finish. I'll try to pick two that look similar. So uh, I'm going to carry on. So using these sticks worked pretty well, although I found the ones that were closest to the center. And maybe it's because of how they had some stress on them um, are no longer super smooth there. You can see that they have some more texture on them, which caught um, on the yarn a little bit as I attempted to remove them. And so, I mean, I guess if doing something wider, these aren't necessarily that useful anyway, but I guess I recommend trying something else, uh, which I'm a little sad about because I really liked using them. Finishing this last edge, oh, was so much easier. Leave way, way more space than you think you need. Two inches is not enough to easily tie. Nope, nope, nope. 
And now if I compare the first thing that I wove versus the last, I would say my edges are not super straight here, but I was a little bit closer to the edge here. Some of these edges, I was so worried about moving it too tight. It's a little bit too loose. So yeah, I, again, don't know if there's like a huge difference in the drape or anything, but I'm excited. I picked one that's a little looser, one that's a little denser to try to go in wet finish. And I would say both of these are about five inches wide and just shy, maybe four and a half to 4.75 inches long. Um, and so we'll see what happens when we go and do this. I'm a bit nervous, not because I'm worried that I'm gonna ruin it. I mean, I'm a little nervous because I picked two different fiber types for this, so that as I agitate a little bit, I don't really wanna felt anything, but you do want uh, to sort of full it a bit, which is sort of like right before felting. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. This is why I'm gonna try it on two and not all of them. And well, yeah, I guess I'm not gonna show this because I don't know what I'm doing, but I will come back and share <laughs> what happened. Oh, and I haven't woven in the, the weft yet, which also I wish I had left a little longer. So I haven't done that yet, but I'm curious what happens if I wait until the, I do it at the end, because when it comes to like weaving in loose ends, I usually like to do it after I've been blocking so it doesn't uh, change the drape at all. One other thing I'll add as I'm using, well, I guess hand soap, because that's what I have over here, and warm water, is that it actually does take a lot of agitation to actually felt something. So, and this isn't that warm yet. So I wouldn't be like too stressed out. I do have some videos on um, felting things by hand that you can check out. But anyway, I'm gonna use both of my hands to do this, but ooh, look at how much more drape we have now. Oh, interesting. Oh man. <laughs> but I guess that's, this is what I'm gonna be doing. And good to see that um, the hand dyed yarn is not bleeding. <laughs> I just wanna add that I'm not expecting things to shrink because of felting and shrinking in that sense, but I wasn't sure if because things may have been a little bit stretched on the loom, if as the fibers relax and they sort of settle down into place and sort of settle into the weave versus feeling a little bit more straight and stretched, if then they might shrink um, a little bit in that way. Uh, and so it wouldn't surprise me if it does that. But I read one article that said that you should like be really really rough and beat and put it through like a machine wash cycle and then I read it to finish the fabric and then I read I watched this other video that was like no just like soak in hot water with some soap and then you know sort of uh, remove the liquid like you might if you were blocking a sweater in between a towel and like patting it dry and then letting it dry so I kind of like moved it around in the water for a bit and now I'm gonna let it soak for 30-ish minutes and then we'll see. I wasn't gentle with the ones that I just wet finished and I would say it does seem like things have bloomed a little bit more. There's a little bit less, you can see some little gaps in here that seem to have filled a little bit. I'm gonna let them dry, but I think that they've shrunk along the warp, which makes sense. That was pretty well stretched, but they've almost grown a little bit this way. So that's very interesting. And I am excited to, I guess, see what they look like when they're dry. And then I'll probably wet finish the rest. All right, so here's one of the loosest coasters. Then the one that I agitated a bit more. And then one that I wet set but I didn't agitate. And you can really see the difference in agitation. Even though this white yarn was super wash, you can see how much more fluffed our fringe is over here versus here. 
And I have to say that washing them and like soaking in warm water, which I didn't add soap to this one, I kind of forgot, does improve the overall drape and feel. Like, I don't know if my phone is picking it up, but the, the yarn has definitely bloomed a bit and settled into the pattern more after wet setting. But I like the increased closeness we got from that little bit of agitation and encouraging it to bloom a little more. So I think now I am going to redo the two, these two that I did with no soap and no agitation. And I'm going to do the two here that I haven't set um, washed at all yet. Can you tell? The difference you can a little bit and see how like the yarn has relaxed a little bit it's very very subtle but it does seem to make a difference i did trim uh this one before i'm doing this so that way maybe i can use oh that's nice and hot maybe i can use some of that yarn for something else in the future that might be a little too hot to comfortably handle okay that's better um and i don't want to overdo it but I now we have soap and I don't have a control. I could have done a control and like just soaked some with soap um, after doing the some that and I'm not gonna be able to tell the difference between the ones that uh, had soap and didn't. But actually even just looking at that feels I don't know. I'm not gonna agitate them a ton, but a little bit of just some touching and then letting this soak for 20 to 30 minutes. I don't know. Maybe I'll rub them with my hands a little bit. I'm not like trying to felt it, but we'll see how, I can always see how it looks and then reevaluate. Obviously, if I wanted something very, very consistent, then I should have done them all at once. So then the treatment would be the same. But I think that I don't know, I'm going in this deep dive of wet setting it feels like, and maybe I'll cut a lot of this, but I was just curious how like it would behave. And so I think that just like blocking, wet finishing is very, very important. And I think that, you know, for something that is like basically a coaster, I definitely want there to be fewer gaps because I wanna make sure that uh, the yarn would soak up any liquid that spilled. But I think that if it was a scarf, I would be okay just letting it soak. Uh, so again, I don't know how much of a difference the soap makes, but I don't know, I, I've i really, really enjoyed this whole process and I'm already like thinking about what I wanna try next. In the end, I do think I like the ones that are a bit more fulled, that I was a bit more aggressive with a little bit more than the ones that I treated a little more gentle. But I think that these are all a really, really good for a first time project. And so now I need to just weave in my loose ends and trim uh, the fringe. Actually, these ones that were in the middle um, only have like a few bits that need to be trimmed. The ones like on the sides have a bit more, but uh, yeah, and then we can have some conclusions. I'll show some photos of the completely finished mug rugs as I am chatting here, but I want to thank you all so much for coming and checking out this vlog of my first time weaving with a rigid head loom. At least as an adult, I think I may have had like a super tiny one as a kid, which I have some vague memories of, but that doesn't really count because I didn't know what I was doing then. And I know a little bit more about what I'm doing now. And so I'm really excited to ooh, try a scarf or try something bigger. It went so much faster than I thought. And yeah, I, there's so much more ways to play with and explore color uh, using weaving that I'm really excited to see. So if you would like to see more of my mostly yarn tying journeys, please make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on that bell so you never miss a new video. If you would like to see me do more vlog style of my projects, I do have more that have been sort of in the works. I just don't get to editing them as quickly usually. So if you'd like to see more, please let me know down in the comments below. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Oh, and my wrist is doing much, much, much better. Phew. Technically, I already finished up this video, but 
I wanted to show one of these adorable mug rugs next to the hat that I knit that had the same two colorways. Both of these are about 50-50 of the two different colorways. The one main difference is that the orange here, because the orange was originally a gradient, it's deeper and goes to lighter. This was some of the lighter orange. So that is one reason why it does look a little more pastel, but not just because of the different way that the colors are combined. And so I just thought that it was really interesting to see that how you use the yarn in the end, whether you knit or weave or crochet with it, you'll get different types of results. And I just think that that is so, so much fun. But anyway, I am very proud and I am really excited to do more weaving in the future and I cannot wait to try out other projects and share that with all of you. Thank you so much for watching.